Hello friends, this is Angelica. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Today I'm going to be doing some watercoloring. I'm going to swatch out a new palette and then I'm going to be watercoloring this die cut from The Greetery. So before I jump into the swatching process, I'm going to quickly walk you through the products I'm using and then for the rest of the video, I'm just going to put on music and let you watch the process. This is the watercolor set that we're gonna be using. This is a 88 color palette from Lightwish. Um, this is a company that reached out to me and asked if they would, if they could send me their watercolors and have me play with them. I said I would be happy to. Now, the reason why I said yes is not because it's an 88 color palette. In fact, I find that to be like ridiculously large. Um, but 28 of those colors are metallic and um, I'm a sucker for metallic paints. I um, did pull out the two metallic paint palettes that I do have so I can compare what the pigments look like next to each other, how well they um, sit on black card or black watercolor paper. And I gotta say, so impressed with these colors, especially this one, by far the best color in this whole palette. You do have just a whole side full of watercolors. There's fluorescence and then the um, the metallics. And I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but this whole set is $29.99. Okay, now for $20, you can get a 12 piece or a, a 12 color palette. And this is from Art Philosophy by Prima. My palette's pretty messy because I let my daughter use it, um, but they are beautiful. They sit beautifully on top of watercolors and they just are stunning on black watercolor paper. So I'm going to do a compar comparison of these watercolors next to these watercolors and then also next to this watercolor palette. This is another metallic paint palette that I bought a few years ago. I don't know if this specific palette is available anymore. I did try and do a quick search and the only ones I could find were 60 to $70. And that was like on Etsy or eBay, which is why I feel like I think that this has been retired and there's no way I spent $60 on this set. So you can get a six piece set from this brand on um, Amazon for about $35. So $20, $40, $30. And you only get 12 colors in that palette, but you get 28 colors in this palette. Now, a few of these colors are pretty close to each other. So I, let me show you on the black. First of all, can you see how shimmery that is? So pretty, so shimmery. Um, but like these three colors right here, they look so different in the palette, but when you put them next to each other, they are pretty much the same color, okay? The one right above it, has a little bit of a pink um, shine to it. You got some greens here that look really similar in color. Look at that gold. It is so stunning, so stunning. That color alone just blew me away. Um, so I'm gonna be swatching the metallics on black watercolor paper and then also on the white watercolor paper and on top of some of the watercolors that I swatched out. So that is what I'm gonna be doing with this palette. And also because I have no, um, like it, this isn't a big investment. So I was really harsh with the watercolors. I just added a drop of water and then I really dug my brush into these little wells or I don't know what you call them, the little, the little blocks just to pick up, just to see how much pigment I could pick up, how thick I can get the watercolors and how, how um, vibrant just one layer of watercolor on a die cut looks. Um, and that's why I chose to do watercoloring on die cuts. I would not watercolor a scene with this water with these watercolors. I like to work with small palettes. I like to mix my own colors. And these are not really mixable colors. There's tons of convenient colors in here. So if you're not into color mixing, this would, this would be a good, um, palette for you, but I like to mix my own colors and these are not mixing colors. So that is what I have to say about this palette. Um, like I said, I'm just going to put music on for the rest of the video. So I'm not going to be talking about the colors um, after 
this. You can go over to my blog and I'll probably write a bit more about the colors over on my blog and I'll leave a link for that down in the description box. Now for the card itself, I'm going to be using this dragonfly die. This is the Jumbo Curiosity Dragonfly die from the Greetery. When you buy the die, which I think is $12 or $15, it will come with a stencil also. So if, you, if you're not into watercoloring your, um, your die cuts, you could still stencil really pretty designs on the wings. So very clever. The sentiment that I'm using is all occasion script sentiments, also from the greetery. Beautiful, beautiful um, sentiment stamp set um, that's very well rounded. Love the font and there is a coordinating die sold separately. For paper, I'm going to be using Academy watercolor paper. This is my first time using this paper. Um, this is 100% cotton. There's 20 sheets to this. It is a block, so most of it is gummed together. You will need to slip something in there to um, cut it away from the gum. If you like to just watercolor, you can just watercolor right on here or stamp an image. I stamp in watercolor, so I could stamp my engine uh, image right on here and not have to tape this down onto a board. Um, but I am going to be pulling it off of the block and running the paper through my die cut machine first with the dragonfly die. And then I'm going to put the negatives back into their, or put the pieces back into their negative. I backed it with painter's tape. And then I'm just going to do some pretty heavy um, watercoloring like yeah, I'm putting down a lot of color. I usually don't color that heavy, which you're, what you're going to see. I also did a little bit of swatching on the side too, just to see what the colors kind of look like um, next to each other. And I think that blue is so gorgeous. It reminds me a lot of like either thalo blue, yellow shade, or like a turquoise, thalo turquoise. Uh, I just think it's gorgeous. And the watercolor papers that I'm using also at Canson XL, this is what I'm going to be um, doing my swatches on. Love this paper. I use it all the time. Not the paper that I watercolor scenes on though. And this is what I use more for just swatches and for mixed media. Beautiful paper, heavy weight, takes a lot of abuse. And it's just, it's a really nice paper, really inexpensive, but it's not cotton paper. So that's why I do not watercolor on it. Excuse me. And then the black um, watercolor paper is Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press. I did buy this off of the Dick Blick website. Um, you can also find it on Amazon. And if you have a local art store, I uh, actually have a local art store. This is just not a brand they keep in stock. Um, definitely go and check out the art store first. And I'm talking about an art store, not, not a box craft store. Um, you're going to find really nice papers that you might not have even heard of in your local art store if you have one in your community. So with that said, I am going to, oh, one last thing, brushes. Here, let me bring this in so I can use that white for a background. I'm going to be using three brushes. This is a flat brush. This is what I'm going to use to do my swatches. Um, they, they come in different sizes. This is a quarter inch brush and this is actually Black Velvet or Silver Brush Black Velvet. Um, this is my favorite brand of brushes that I have in my collection. And I have a lot of brushes. I've been collecting for five years now and I'll just grab a, a brush or two here and there just to try out different brands and different lines in that brand. Like this right here, this is Princeton. Princeton has tons of different lines in under this company's name. Um, to work around your price point. Okay, so this is one of their more inexpensive lines. This is Velvet Touch, a number eight round. Love how the tip is. And because this is a more inexpensive brush, this is what I use when I'm working with metallic paints. I don't like to use a more expensive brush with metallic paints. I just, I just don't like um, the chance of any of that metallic um, flakes to be left behind in my um, hairs in this brush. This brush is about $20, $25, depending on where you buy it. And this brush is between eight to $10. So if you're getting into watercoloring, I say your biggest place to put your investment is in a nice brush. Um, 
the number six in this company and number eight round with this company. Uh, that's what I would recommend out of all the brushes I've tried from very expensive sable brushes all the way to the most generic or inexpensive synthetic brush. This is such a well-rounded brush. Um, it is half synthetic, half squirrel hair. Uh, it just it holds a lot of water in the belly. The tip is beautiful. Um, this is just a really, really nice brush to practice with, to practice your, your um, how to swatch, how to color, how to color blend. Um, highly recommend. I also recommend a nice paper too. And that is why I tried this paper out because I usually use Arches. Arches Cold Press watercolor paper. And that is expensive. It's a pretty expensive paper. And this has got that same beautiful texture because it is cold press. So it's got a nice texture to it. It's a, a nice, pretty, like natural white. And it's half the price of Arches. So um, that does, that, that comes very highly recommended for me. Okay, so that finishes it. I have done enough talking. I am going to put on some music and start the swatching process and I hope you enjoy it. I, um, if you have any questions, you can go over to my blog. Maybe I've answered them on the blog. If not, leave a comment down below. I'll also leave links to the company itself. So if you wanna go over and read their story, um, learn a little bit more about them and their products, there will be a link to their shop down below too. But with that said, I hope you enjoy it and let me know what you think.